this is the part of the stream where I basically am silent until the stream starts. And by silent, I mean I talk. Except it's about totally useless stuff, so there's no value to what I'm saying. Of course, there's no value to what I'm saying after the stream starts either, so really kind of hard to tell the difference. Um, we'll give the hordes of masses of people who want to watch the stream uh, another 28 seconds to get here. <coughs> I will also cough. I have tuberculosis, uh, so it's pretty sad. Um, but not the fatal kind, the, the kind that just gives you a cough when you're streaming. It, it's, it's, I think it's a computer virus kind of thing. I don't really know how that works. Okay. And as the hordes of masses rush in... Hello and welcome to the stream. What are we doing today? I don't know. And actually, we do have a few exciting things to do today, or a few things to do that excite me personally. Okay, um, the first and most major interesting thing I learned uh, from, um, from the email, which I'm not going to quote in its entirety at least, uh, is this. I don't know if, yeah, I actually should, should be able to read this. To compensate for the Earth's atmosphere when, the, when calculating circumstances for eclipse, blah, 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 but this is the key phrase here. Let me after shrink that down so we can see it. Danjin prepare, proposed to enlarge the Earth's diameter by 1 over 85 to compensate for the atmosphere. And this is the one they use now. So our problem yesterday was we said the May 2021 eclipse didn't look full to us. It looked partial, but never quite full. The question is, I don't know the answer. The question is, will adding uh, this, um, will adding this little change to the program just for Earth uh, fix that problem? And let's, let's go ahead and do it and find out. And I, I guess I'm going to move this to the top here because it's a little bit too small. And I'll move this over here, and I'll move this over here. And I can still sort of see my chat. Okay. Okay. So really all we have to do over here is when we get the, um, oh crap. Oh, I think I moved the body radius function into something else, but okay. Because uh, this just computes their um, NAF IDs, and I'm pretty sure that actually the, the whole, <laughs> all right, not a huge deal. Um, so here it is. Um, this is, this is probably ugly enough that it makes me weep. Um, we're basically going to do a test here to see if, if, um, if S, e oh, Jesus Christ. So at least we're, gonna, we're at least going to, um, that's not what I meant to do. I probably meant to copy the URL where that is, because... Okay, the problem here is, in theory, we need to do whether the uh, Earth is, you know, being eclipsed. I guess it doesn't really matter if it's being eclipsed. It's only if it's the eclipsing body. So let's see. So it's T. I'll make a note for that. Only when Earth is eclipsing body. So here's the ugliness. If... I think it's T is the eclipsing body, and the moon would be the third body. The eclipsing object, yep, 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 yep. So we say if T, your mama, equals 399, that's the Earth's NAF ID, TR times equals 86 over 85. That is the increase in the radius to compensate for the Earth's atmosphere. So now... I need to make, oh wow, someone's edited this. Probably me, but still. Okay. So we go ahead and do that. And now let's go ahead and do a, um, one I'm going to get screen working so it actually saves me time. So, ooh, shiny. Um, instead of costing me more time. But again, that's one of the things about technology. Okay. So what we want to run here is BC occultations. Uh, we want... The observer to be our moon, the light source is our sun, the planet is Earth, 
and I'm tempted to put it in like a little print statement that says using earth expansion parameters, but I think I call that function more than once, so that would be kind of ugly. So let's just see if this all works nicely now. Uh, okay. Um, Okay. Let's see if this works. Ooh. Kind of nice if it told us where. By the way, the most recent toolkit, N0067, has been released. I got an email about that. So I'm now two versions behind, but I, I really hate upgrading because it breaks everything. Um, so we're going to keep trying with this. So now let's see what the hell's going on here. Uh, does not contain... Uh, well, let's, let's go crazy here. Okay, so something very basic is failing, and I maybe think I know what it is. Um, so this is BC occultations. WN. Okay. Um, beginning and end. But, I mean, we do compute all this good stuff here. Um, don't we? I mean, if we don't, something is very, very wrong. Um, huh. Okay. Well, you do compute them here, but that's not really wha what we're concerned with. Um... The only thing I can think of is, see, all the windows I instantiate, I'm, I'm careful to check that there's at least one result in it. Um, so, alrighty. Hello, Beast, oh, hello, Beast 2019, I know who you are, wonderful streamer. You can see your name right on the, uh, on, right on the stream today, because we've got the chat on the stream. Uh, wonderful person, marvelous, brilliant. You should all go watch her. In fact, you should all go watch her now, because this is, Clearly, whatever she's doing uh, could not be less interesting than this. But hello, good to see you on the stream. Um, okay, so let's try to figure out where this is occurring by using our printfs. Pretty sure this was not happening yesterday, so I'm kind of annoyed. Um, oh wow, actually, does it even get to partial? Wow. So somehow it doesn't get to partial. The only thing I've changed is this code here. Um, so in theory, removing it should fix everything. And if it does, just be freaked out as possible. Okay, no. So whatever the hell I broke, it wasn't broken here. What's interesting is that I ran this on my other computer yesterday, so very, very strange. So it's not getting here. I think something's wrong with the S ear and E ear computations. Um, I'm going to run a BC git on the other machine, or a BC a git diff actually, to see how the hell this has changed. Um, And really, the only changes have been the one line that I added. So I have no idea how this thing... Um, let's see if it still runs. Yeah, it gives the same error on the other machine now, although I did run it and got results out of it earlier. So, kind of a mystery. Um, okay. So the function it doesn't like is wnfetid. Um, well, let's see if it's happening over here. If it I but it's happening before the word coverage shows up. So if this is it, something is funky with the Jupyter 310 kernel, which is, oh, I know what's wrong. Yes, um, 
Yes. The coverage, this coverage is good for all of Jupiter's moons, but it's certainly not good for, um, for Earth's moon. So I'm basically trying to ask it, you know, if I want to use Jup310 to compute Earth's moon position, when can I do that? The answer is, of course, never. Um, so let's see. So here we do need to check to see if, um, or actually this code does really nothing but tell us when we, 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 we don't really need it anymore. Originally it told us um, how, what periods of time we could request data for, uh, but we figured out that's 18, whatever the hell, 1850 to 2100. So we don't need that anymore. So let's go ahead and kill that. Let's do another make. It's always good when debugging functions break the actual functionality of a program. All right, let's see what this says. Okay, partial four. Um, it doesn't count total, but it, it very easily could. Um, okay, I need to find the one that is the May... Is this the May 21? Oh, sorry, that's... Right, I keep forgetting that we no longer, um, we print the ephemeris time, which is different than the, the, the Unix time. But this does tell us when this all happens. So, booyah, this now tells us there is a total eclipse um, on May 16th of 2022. Is that the one we wanted? I don't think so, actually. Um, I, I think it is. I, well, hang on. Let me now check <laughs> our results. <laughs> actually, I sent an email about this, so I'm going to go check my email. Um, and we actually have other data here, too. So it's 26 May 2021. And booyah, here we have it. According to us, there is a 17-minute total eclipse because we extend the Earth's diameter. Uh, that is actually a really good result to know. Um, I want to include it in my email that I'm going to send to answer the person who helped me I at NASA. Um, so this is this is interesting. So we say from 11:10 to 11:27, there is a total eclipse solely because we expanded the Earth's diameter radius, rather, or both, by 185th. That is just freaking amazing. That means we have an eclipse where a part of the moon is only being eclipsed by the Earth's atmosphere. That is just bizarre. Okay, so I'm sure that somewhere on these un unnecessary number of open tabs, I have um, I have the, the data for this one eclipse, and now we'll see if we can get it to uh, agree with what we're saying. And it's this one eclipse that's been giving us the problems. What the hell is this doing? Okay, I didn't really need that again. Um, oh shit, this is that. Okay, never mind. Yeah, this is the one because uh, it shows it in only in PDF form. Um, okay, and it does not tell us too much about... Um, yeah, it doesn't tell us too much about... Totality is 15 minutes, we say. Totality is just under 17 minutes. I'm not concerned about that. Um, Okay, unfortunately I think we found this goes into a circular loop. Well, we do have events up here. No, we don't. We do have events up here. We don't have the right file up here. But let's see if we can get that. Um, maybe not. Let's go ahead and get... Um, let's go ahead and get events up and running on the file that I... W not that one, not that one. Oh yeah, I think we had to do dirt PDF to find out which one. Okay. LE 2021, May 6th, this one. Now we have two copies of it. Okay, so let's take a look here. Um, they're really stingy with... Here it is, the Eclipse contact points. Um, P1, which is... We, don't, we ignore penumbral, uh, so we won't expect to see that on our results. Or anything on our results, because we are... I don't know what the hell we're doing anymore. Hang on. 
Okay, so it wasn't here. I think it was here where we did the... Nope, wasn't here. It's probably here. There we are. Okay, so we're saying that the uh, first contact is 944, but we are ignoring the penumbral eclipse. So 944, good deal. The second contact is when the full eclipse begins, I think. Uh, if we'll just make basically if our answers are right, we're going to match them up like that. 1127, and they say 1125, so a little bit off there. 1252, we say 1252, and that should be the other oh, one. We don't we ignore the penumbral end. Okay. So this doesn't actually talk about the total eclipse, but we do the umbral, the total eclipse last 14. Okay. So. So this actually makes me really happy. Um, and in fact, this is, I'm going to now bring up a portion of the email that I need to respond to um, and say this, this totally worked. Um, and I need to be careful how I do that. I don't want to copy the whole email. And I guess it's going to be in BC Occultations text, which is kind of where it belongs. Although honestly, we're getting further and further from that. Okay, stand by. Okay. Oh, I'm tempted. I am so tempted. Okay, I know you can't see what I'm doing. Stand by and I will bring in a portion of that email. Okay, something is weird here. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, this is a lot more crap here that I forgot about. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to paste to the end of this, as we always do, with a row of percentages to indicate, hey, this is a row of percentages. Um, oops, paste the whole thing that's not private. And then I'm going to post the other one as well because it's going to be relevant shortly. Wow, this one's long. You'll see them in just a second or maybe already depending on how Emacs is behaving. One, two... Okay, so here we go. This is the response. Um, and this is the page that he tells me about this page. Um, the fact that blood moon eclipses occur seems to show that sunlight reaching the moon due to refraction. I don't think that's what he means, though. I think what he means is through the atmosphere of Earth, which is different from refraction. Um, the other thing he points out is it's possible there's a portion of the moon that's still lit up but the people on Earth can't see it, so as far as they're concerned, it's a total eclipse. Um, so that that's the other uh, that's the other possibility there. Um, so I guess I'll just put. Well, let's see. Got to be careful here. Um, uh, you know what? I think I'm just gonna gonna answer this on my own, uh, on more of my own time. Um, I just need to thank him for this. We are going to look at the second thing in just a minute here. That is the um, that is how to create a surface point um, on something to see the uh, to see whether there's an eclipse there. Although it now occurs to me this is less interesting because we don't need to. Uh, we we now know that if you use the expanded Earth, the moon is eclipsed. So this is actually a very interesting eclipse in the sense that uh, part of it is just due to the atmosphere of the Earth. Um, and you know the 185th, um, 185th increase. Now the Earth's um, Earth's radius is about 8,000 um, miles. So 68 would be. It's not an insignificant amount actually. Um, so that is that is big enough, obviously, to do what we want. Okay. So now we're happy that why that eclipse didn't work. That doesn't really answer the question, of course. Um, uh, da, 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 da. And we fix, sort of fixed our error with Stellarium because uh, we just got a newer version of Stellarium. Um, so, so now we may want to work on the actual answer itself. 
Um, and I always put the word caveat in my answer, so I haven't begun an answer because the word caveat doesn't appear anywhere. Uh, to do lots of notes in README Stream, I put some of the notes for this answer in README Stream, not in occultations, so that's fine. So I actually did bring, I did actually create this file, which we're going to look at and 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 document, uh, that computes all of Jupiter lunar eclipses using both my method and the method, the, s the simpler, less accurate method that NASA uses for comparison. And it is in my, it is in my GitHub, I did push it up, and it's called Jupiter Galilean Eclipses Text.bz. It's a beautiful name. And what this tells us is uh, basically, well, we're going to document this, but this is basically telling us Callisto entered a partial eclipse, which it then better have damn left at some point. Uh-oh. This is already bad. Oh, yeah, which it left um, four hours later, 919 to 1337. Okay. And so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and do this. And then to answer the question, we actually want to get some, you know, some composite or summary numbers out of this, which we can do pretty easily, I think. I mean, we'll need a Perl script, but not a very difficult one. So let's start off by um, um, okay. Readme dot Jupiter Galilean eclipses dot text. Now we don't need dot text. We're not using DOS. Okay. The file la la la. Contains a list of all eclipses, ooh, all lunar eclipses as viewed from Jupiter. From Jupiter? Of Jupiter's four largest moons, also known as the Galilean moons. Boy, um, let me go ahead and put this into fly spell mode. Probably need to put it in text mode for that. Okay. Um, Which will tell me when I misspell something like this, and I'm pretty sure it's just Galilean. So, Galileo? Oh man, I can't spell. I spell word. How do I spell Galilean? Like that. Um, and then watch, we'll give a list of them. I O. Is there like an order to them? I, I don't think so. I mean, there is in the NAFE ID sense. And actually, I'm going to need it in just a second, so I should probably... Okay. Uh, explanation of columns. Um, the first column is the moon being eclipsed is the NAFE ID of the moon being of the moon being eclipsed. And we'll say 501 is IO. I'm gonna be a little bit informal here and do this. Let me figure out what 502 is Europa or whatever. Um, it's in the NAFE IDs file so this should not be difficult. Europa, I got it right. Um, 503. Now, I'm remembering something I need to do. Um, shoot. Never mind. Um, I'm almost sure this is Ganymede, but I'm going to double check. Yay, Ganymede. And 504 equals Callisto. Now, usually you would do this in like a list, first column, second column, but I'm being a little bit sloppy, but I'm okay with that. Is... Um, what source of light is being eclipsed. <laughs> I'm so clever. In our case, is the naif of which source of light. The second column is the naif ID of which source of light is being eclipsed. In our case, 
this is always 10 for the sun. The third column, or the th third, third column, the third column is the NAIF ID of the body causing the eclipse. In our case, this is always 5, or whatever, 599, I guess I'm going to put it in quotes, if I'm going to put the sun in quotes, or actually I'm not going to put the sun in quotes, it's a number. 599 equal Jupiter. Okay, that's the boring part. Now we get the columns that are harder to understand. The fourth column, um, I'm going to go ahead and put a note in the, uh, uh, you know, to do limitations of my program, why, CT, um, why I'm putting in the NASA times which are known to be inaccurate. Um, indicates whether uh, an eclipse is starting or ending. And again, we're going to do, say, what do we have? P, P plus, uh, P and T are the, m the important ones, and then we have C, P, and C, T, but we're what? P plus. A partial eclipse is starting. P minus. A partial eclipse is ending. T plus. A total. I'm going to put in the word lunar just because we don't want to forget we're talking about lunar eclipses. A total lunar eclipse is starting. A total lunar eclipse is ending. Um, for sanity checking not too much. Um, um, for something. Um, for accurate, uh, it's not really accuracy testing, though. What is it for? San it is really for, for sanity checking. We also include uh, these values computed by C spices, it's really just spice, uh, OCLT, whatever the hell the name of that function is that I don't like. Well, I mean, I do like it, but GFOLCT function. I guess if I'm going to be proper, I should either say spices, GFOTL, or GFOTL underscore C. What are these values? A partial eclipse, a partial lunar eclipse starts for a viewer at the center uh, computed. We also include the values, I think we can just get away with this, CP plus, CP minus, CT plus. We also include these values with the letter C. C prefixed. Or C prefixed. Um, these values have the same meaning as above, but apply to a theoretical Is that true? Um, no, it's not actually. The, the, it's sort of different, actually. Um, um, let's see. Ooh, actually, these values might be really ugly and nasty. Because a partial eclipse here just means there's a penumbral eclipse at the center. Wow, and we're we're really sort of ignoring that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little bit more careful here. Um, 
So we actually do. For sanity checking, we also include uh, these values computed by Uh, and then I need to put up some sort of really ugly disclaimer here saying, uh, but we'll do that in just a second. A partial solar, okay. Um, these functions, I'm beginning to think I shouldn't have even added these uh, to a theoretical Ooh. Oh, brother. Because these are actually solar eclipse values, not lunar, but they're solar on the um, on the moon side. So what do I want to say about them? I am going to cheat. And I'm going to put a to-do to, to do explain C dot values better. Uh, minus CT plus CT minus are used for sanity testing and can be safely ignored. Haha! -ha, that's how we do it. We, we put them in and we tell them to ignore them. That is brilliant. I love doing stuff like that. Alright, um... The fifth column um, indicates the time a given event occurs, uh, indicates the ephemeris time. Um, the ephemeris time is um, you will generally want to use the time in the sixth column, which is given as y y y y m m d d h h m m s s. I hope I didn't put fract. Oh, I didn't. Okay, good. Okay. Um. So this is. Uh, oh yeah. Oh no. The disclaimer was going to be for these values. Okay. All right. So I think we're done here. Um. Oh, hang on. Uh, all of the Jupiter's largest moon from 1850 to 20. Oh, okay. That's gonna really screw that up. Uh. All lunar eclipses. From well, we'll just have that as a separate note. Uh, all lunar eclipses from 1850 to 2100, as viewed by Jupiter's as viewed from Jupiter. Um, we will need to disclaim why we're saying 1850 to 200. And so the first one's like really, really close. And then the very last one should be really, really close to, yep, 2100. All right, we're good. Um, okay, so for this file, this is good. Now we need to give our answers. Um, all right, so now we're gonna go over here. Blah, 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 blah. Tons of notes. Okay. Uh, take a deep breath. Let's reread read the question, because, I mean, we do want to answer the question that's actually asked, as opposed to the question I want to <laughs> answer. At least, okay, here we go. How often, so this is does not, and I've even, so this I need to add to the top of my original answer. Um... Um, well, so a lot of the stuff I've kind of done before, um, 
So this guy actually answered my question. But he is not as smart as I am. Um... All right, let us begin with our answer. Um, subject to important caveats below. Between the years 1850 and 2100. And now we start boogieing down. Um, now, I didn't put it in the GitHub, but in the... Um, Actually, we don't know if we even need it in the GitHub. We actually don't. Uh, the, the original program computes the number of eclipses also, and I was worried we would need that. But the, it occurs to me we really don't, because um, we can just compute that, and I don't think it's going to be too bad. Uh, if, of course, I can remember... Nope, not all retrogrades. Jupiter, Galilean eclipses, blah, blah, blah. Now this isn't going to quite be right because this is going to be uh, including oh all these all this crap, and I think I might have made a mistake by yeah okay. So we want to look at T plus here, but unfortunately we will catch C T plus unless we do this. If dollar sign F three equal equal T plus, and uh, we need parentheses around that. Um, print the line. Okay. Nope, that's... Whoa, that's really, really wrong because in Perl you have to compare strings like this. So that's all looking good. And let's not pipe it to shell. That's not very useful. Okay, that's 51,592. And I'm hoping it's the same number it is. Okay. Um, um, all right. these eclipses, um, and the same number of partial eclipses. Thus, there are no purely partial eclipses. And now I love to do double indenting. So, in a period between 1850 and 2100, which I think includes the two years, um, does it? No, it doesn't include 2100. It only includes, uh, so it's going to be 2100 minus 1850. Okay, that's 250 years. Um, that's 206.4, 206.4 eclipses per year. Okay. Now this one's going to be a little bit trickier, and I don't know if we can actually do it, um, without using a Perl script. We kind of want to find the time now between T plus and T minus, um, successive rows of T plus and T minus, and I... I just don't think we can do that without using Perl. Um, and actually, I mean, not, not on the command line, writing an actual program. So let's not be hesitant to do that. Um, VC parse Jovian lunar eclipses.pl. That's like the longest freaking thing I've ever named a program, maybe. Um, I don't want to deal with a uh, directory, so I'm just going to do... Ooh, ooh, I can't do that. Sorry. Um, I do want to be a little bit more flexible, so wherever I've defined git home to be. Um, and there's a way to make it so that uh, you can do this even more cleverly. Can't chidder. To have it not... Uh, to have it complain if it can't find the directory, but we're not going to even use that. I'm apparently, I'm in a hurry of some sort. Uh, I'm not. I just don't know. And maybe we would use bclib. I'm losing my freaking mind. Okay. 
And so we're going to open, so now that we know we're in the right directory, we can do this. Open bzcat, uh, hang on, and whatever the hell the file name was. Gal Jupiter, Galilean, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm such a smart ass. Nope, those are just the readme's. I've got a lot of crap here. So now, let's see if I can cut. Well, okay, see if I can copy. Excuse me. Uh, that's probably not what I wanted. I'm just going to cut and paste. No! Do not... Piece of crap. Do not want you to be unzipped. Did you be unzipped it? If you be unzipped... Unzipped it? If you be unzipped it, I'm going to be unhappy. Okay. And then... Pipe? I probably need a name for that pipe. And so while a... Uh, well, right now we're just going to do a debug because I want to make sure this is, you know, zeroth step is making sure the program is where it's found, where it's blah 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 blahing, that I can actually run it, and then we'll actually have it do something. Roll fix, don't. That's not cool. I really need to fix that up, and we'll pipe to less. Now we're going to try to make this a little bit gener- oh, your mama. Okay. And I guess I can do a chomp here if I wanted to. It, it, all that does is get rid of the last new line and it really has no effect whatsoever. Okay, so what we're going to do here is my moon, sun, planet, none of which are important, type, ephemeris time, and start date equals split on any combination of spaces of the dollar sign, the, the thingy. Um, just to make sure this is working, we'll say debug moon, and then we'll get to actually doing some work. Maybe. That looks good. Okay. So the type is probably what's going to be most important to us. What we're going to try to do, uh, we're going to try to do several things here with the type. Um, okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and keep up a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of this, the file just so we know what we're doing. Okay, and I guess we can do this in ephemeris time since that's slightly more accurate. Um, okay. Um, Now, we want to keep track of when each moon is in each type of eclipse. Um, and how long that happens, although it might be interesting just to keep a full list of that. Um, and we could probably do that in a hash. That is a list. I, I just said that, yes. Um, now the only problem I'm seeing here is this might be a little bit too big for that. Um, we have, um, that's not too big, 742,000 lines, easy peasy. Okay, so, um, we will call this my data, and we will say, if type equal uh, let's see, P plus. We could actually make this even more clever. But we'll just do it for P plus for right now. If we started a partial eclipse, then the data for this moon and for partials, we're just going to push and treat this as a list and then push uh, this, this time, this uh, ephemeral time. So this is going to say we're going to push the time every... This will be a list of when partial eclipses begin. However, we actually probably want to do it um, with um, other types of eclipses as well. So actually what we can do, um, I think we can get away with this. So this basically pushes um, 
Oh. Yeah, and the only bad thing about this is that this treats, um, it, 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 it keeps ends of partial eclipses separate from beginnings of partial eclipses. Uh, which is actually kind of, oh, that's actually really nice, because then we could do a subtraction. Um, so boogie. All right, so now, at the end of all this, we will want to debug data. Now, because this is a 700 blah 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 blah, um, we're going to just do it for a little bit for now. So if dollar sign count plus plus greater than 10,000 uh, last. And we're testing, so we'll just test with 10,000 rows. Let's see what happens. That was freaking fast. In fact, that's so fast, I'm wondering if we actually need testing. Okay, but anyway. Uh, so we need to actually debug, need to unfold data, and debug. I'm not sure even this will work. We're going to have to go deeper. Okay. Key T plus, array, gorgeous. Um, and then, so hang on, hang on, hang on. So, 501 T plus, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, love it. Now, let's go a little crazy. Um, I'm going to come at this line out to see how long it takes. Um, I just want to see how long it takes to get through the whole thing. Because okay, that is going to take a few seconds here. Um, about three, about 3.6 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and push this to get. Wow, I apparently changed a lot of new functions. I changed a lot of files, not I changed, and I created a new file as well. All right, so what we're going to do here is, um, I mean, now at this point we kind of have to, you know, decide on a, let's look at the uh, total eclipses for IO. Um, so we'll call B the beginning times. That will be data 501 for IO. Um, and then the beginning of the total eclipses. Treat that as a list. <laughs> Gotta love this, don't you? Um, and then the ends times will be the, the same thing except for T minus. And so now if this works correctly, um, we should have two lists here. And also, if you've ever thought about learning Perl and you don't already know it, this should discourage you quite a bit. Okay. Um, good, 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 good. Now, the only problem is it's possible that the very first entry is a T plus instead of a, I mean, you know, or a T minus instead of a T plus. So we got to be, that's a little bit of caution we have to use there. Not a huge amount. Um, I guess we'd also probably need to say uh, how big these are. If they're the same size, we're in good shape. If they're not the same size, we have kind of an issue. And I realize, okay, they're the same size. Awesome, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, I think we would actually need to go with the bigger of the two. But anyway. For dollar sign i equals zero, zero, dollar sign num beg. Um... I kind of want to know, before I do too much more, uh, what the what the um, what the length of the eclipse is in seconds. Um, these numbers better be a positive, good, and fairly consistent. Yeah, I like that. Um, I don't know if there's any benefit to printing these out. Well, we are printing these out, but I mean, because um, what we really want is an average, but maybe we'll keep track of the max and min as well. We are so spiffy. Um, okay. So... Okay. Okay. 
So we want to say Ionian eclipses. I don't even think Ionian is the right word though. Io eclipses last between partial eclipses last between blah and blah with an average length of blah. And we probably should put in things for blah, otherwise we'll confuse people. So we'll just say max equals, um, I should be able to say plus infinity here. And min is equal to zero. And then we will compute the time, which is end i minus beg i. Uh, if time is less than zero, we, it, this might actually end up happening. If it does, we need to tweak to um, uh, neg time. This is just a way to let us know that's happening. Okay, um, average equals, oh, I guess I gotta say my over here, my max. And beg, oh, I do need to say my beg here because I haven't used it as a variable yet. Uh, my end, my max, my min, my, and I'm gonna be spiffy Mr. Uh, math here and say my mean instead of my average, because that's one type of average. Um, actually, I'm going to say my tote, because we're going to be adding these up and then dividing. My count equals zero, which actually I'm pretty sure I don't need, but I might if I, if I have a problem with like the, the neg time crap. Okay, so my time is equal to this. Um, tot plus equals um, time, count plus plus, um, min equals the min of itself, um, yeah, these are backwards. Okay, so my min is going to be the min of the current min, th I, could, I, I could also use a, a for loop here, by the way time, whereas my max is going to be the max of the current max and the current time. So if this all works, uh, by the way, there is there is an issue here that we've hard-coded 501 and, and T plus. We will fix that in just a second. Okay, and then over here, debug, because we're still not quite ready to print yet. Min, max, tot, count. Is there anything else we would want from this? The concept of a uh, a mode doesn't really exist here because these numbers are fractional. And the concept of a median does exist. Um, and I, I'm now just, I don't think I'm going to give that, um, uh, I mean, I could just sort this list of, of, of times that we have Actually, I could create a list of times and then find them in max and yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think we're good enough with this. Alrighty. And I don't think we're printing out anything except the information at the very end. So, yeah, it looks okay. Obviously, we need to divide this number by this number. But that is not a problem. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Okay, so we have the number of eclipses, the average time they last, oh, and how often they occur. That's actually an important thing to know. Um, so let me go ahead and push this to git real quick, but we're going to need to change it a little bit. And push, push, push. Get, get, get. Um, all right. So now it's being look like we actually want to have a. Um, uh, this is inefficient, but I don't care. Um, it now it looks like we just want to have a list of times. Actually, that that might be more. Oh, actually, we need more than that, though, don't we? Um, okay. So the elapsed time will be the differences in the beginning times. Uh, yes, we, we do have that. Um, uh, 
I'm actually pretty sure I have a, there's a function that I have, not necessarily built into Perl, uh, called differences that will compute this. And I am wrong about that. I shouldn't be wrong about that. Hang on. Sys. Nope, that's find root. Uh, that's a set theoretical difference. What the hell? I don't have something that does that. It's not a hard thing to write. Um, okay. So I guess we can... Yeah, this time I'm getting more and more concerned that I do not want to necessarily measure these values in place, even though it's more efficient to do so. It's not that much more efficient. So what I want to do here is if we go through beg, so we're going to say my times, um, I'm going to be careful. My delta, no, not my deltas, my lengths, because we're measuring time length here. We're not measuring beginning or ending time. Uh, okay, we'll still do this, because we still want to be able to do this. And then we'll say push lengths time um, and then we're going to got to be very careful here because we, we have a one-off condition um, if i is greater than zero which means if i but i'm going to actually put in the condition here we also want to push on to um, intervals are between. I, I'm just going to call it between. Lengths um, and between times. Okay, so I'm going to push between time um, a bag of i minus bag of i minus 1, which will work except when i is 0. So I think we're okay there. It'll actually work when i is 0, but it'll give the wrong result because it'll, it'll try to think that um, It'll try, and by the way, we already have sort of an average of every uh, blah blah day, so maybe that's also um, that's redundant information. Okay. Um, so now we're going to compute all of these values that we want after the fact. Um, we probably don't even need to put them into variables, but okay. It's equal to max of lengths. I guess we could sort length of the... No, we're not going to do that. My min equals min of lengths, plural. Uh, my... Oh. Yeah, if we don't compute a total, we actually need to compute a total. But let's see if there's a function that does that for us. Average. Is there an average function? Probably isn't. Linear <laughs> regression. <laughs> yeah, that's how we do it. All right. Um, so I will cheat a little bit by adding in totals here. Um, uh, so the total is we're going to... Uh, um... So my average, my mean, is now I gotta be a little bit careful here, is the total divided by the size of big, which is actually dollar sign big plus one, or it could be written as scalar of big. Same thing. Uh, so max min total we don't count we don't really need because it, we know it. Um, okay, so what else do we want to know here? This is the um, we want to know the average difference. Oh Jesus Christ. Uh, so now we have the between list. Yeah. No, I don't think we really need that value. I mean, it should match the, the value that we're getting for, you know, once every blah days. So I think, I think we can get rid of this. 
Um, so I think we can now print. Um, okay, and one more thing we need to do is right now this is hard coded to uh, the moon and the um, and the type of eclipse. Um, so we will go ahead and. Um, and again, these are going to be required options, which is a, is a, is a oxymoron. The moon in question. Oh, you know, what's really ugly is we're going to end up computing all of these. <laughs> uh, so maybe we should be a little bit more clever. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to compute all of them, we don't need to run the program multiple times. So, for moon in 501 to 504, for, am I doing that wrong? That well, should be fine. Um, for, we can't use type, well we can actually because we, we kind of stopped using it there. For type in P, T, C, P, C, T. My bag equals data of moon. And you got to be a little bit careful here because we're going to be putting a plus. So this has to be dollar sign type in, in brackets. So the plus actually it might not have to be. Because the plus is cannot be part of the variable name. Although, god damn, this is... This is relying on some features that I really don't want to be relying on. Anyway. If this doesn't work, we'll, we'll fix it. But I mean, this is because minus can't be part of a variable name. Uh, my lengths, my between. I guess we're not doing between anymore. Um, also, it'd be nice if this were spelled correctly. Okay, so then we go through. We do this, we don't do that, and then we print um, the moon, the type. Um, what's the standard way of doing this? Min, mean, max? I don't know. And then, of course, we need to remember that we're inside of a... Ooh. Oh, that's actually kind of nice. We're, we're using i as our third indentated... indentated indented loop. Nope, don't want that. So this is a pretty nice fucked up loop here. I like it. Okay. And then we, we declare these variables each time. Um, print them and then end this and that. If this works, I'm going to go ahead and actually... Um, now this is clever. I'm going to... Um, I'm debugging, so you're going to see a lot of debugging output, if there were any, which there isn't. But the actual output output is being uh, sent to temp uh, output text. Okay. So, okay. Um, and we're not going to use the central eclipses, I guess. So, um, does this... Okay, so this would be nice if it also told us the total number of of these types of eclipses, uh, which is not hard to get. It's basically the, um, the size of the list plus one. So we can do that. Sorry, it's the size of the list, which is the number dollar sign number plus one. So da 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 da. da. Oh, cool! And it never actually died. So, and I'm going to be paranoid and just do this dollar sign number bag plus one, and the pu plus one's going to be literally printed as plus one. And that's just to, uh, just to, uh, just so I remember to add the one. Okay. And I guess if we're going to do all that sorcery, we might as well say how many days there are between eclipses. Um... Um, I 
And I guess we don't need CP and CT confusing us. Okay. Yeah, there's something wrong here, I think. Um, I don't think there's a partial eclipse of Callisto that lasts that long. Um, that would be like 14 days. Um, so something's wrong there. Um, the shortest, the average, the max. The other maxes look like they're pretty good. Callisto, what the hell is going on with you? We are going to have to look, take a look at Callisto here. Let's see what's going on. And the uh, 311 is the shortest, also doesn't look that great, to be honest. Um, it, it does seem like you're not going to have super long or super short eclipses. Um, the only thing I can... No, but see... Okay, I think what might happen is the very first... If the first... Shit. If the first event is the end of something, we don't know its length, but we still try to find its length because we put it into the into the end array. Uh, so we're fine if the beginning is the first thing that happens because then all the ends will be later. But if the first end, although in that case we should have the um, ending occur before the beginning, which means we should get a negative result, which means we should get the die condition unless I unless I got rid of it somehow. Uh, yeah, that's that's supposed to be there. So what what what's happening here? So well, you know what we could do. And as always, we just we just you know keep adding crap. Let's let's find the um, beginning, the first eclipse beginning and end time. Oh, and that could also happen at the very last eclipse. So that might be where we're, we're going wrong. Um, and in Perl, that is just called beg minus one, or n minus one. Alrighty. Show us what you got. Yes, and perhaps I should have realized that was going to go off the edge of the screen. Uh, did I tee it to something? I did. So I can now do... Still ugly, but... Um, but more visible. Okay. Alright. So not only is that information not useful, it is ugly. So what we can do here is uh, we could print it on a separate line, but let's also um, I really what we want is the, the subtraction of them. We want the length, which I guess would be um, length zero and length minus one. Uh, although I'm, I'm not seeing how this is going to help us. I guess if the, the maximum value happens to be on one of these lengths, we kind of know that something is seriously wrong. Okay, so... I think Callisto is the only one that was give, giving me concerns. Wow. So it's not, th it's not that one. Um, I'm finding it hard to believe that we never have a something that starts with the T or a P minus. Um, uh, that could be a glitch in the matrix there. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, the, la the, la the first and last do not seem way off. All right, Mr. Callisto, we're going to hunt you down. And this might be where our 3600... Um, our choice of parameters for how long we're going to wait between eclipses uh, screws us over. So, uh, so I guess we what we want to do here is um, okay.
What we're going to look for here is if we have a time that's greater than something we want to print out. Uh, oh yeah, that's fine. Uh, if time is greater than the tide. No, just kidding. One million. I, th I think this is just a bit bigger than what it is. Okay. Hang on. This one's zero there. There we go. Die. Bad time. And what we really want, well, uh, we'll print it I, end of I, beginning of I, and that should give us more than enough information to find it in the uh, grep, in the grep, in the grepple thing. It find it in the bz bz2 file. So we won't even bother with debugging here. This is going to die. Okay. Here it is. Okay. I gotta be careful here. We need to because we're trying to find something that starts with a minus sign. We have to put the double minus to say ignore, uh, ignore the uh, minus sign at the beginning. Uh, don't think of minus four four three three blah blah as an option. Think of it as a um, as a value as a file to grab as a value to grab for. Oh, it won't, will it? Really, what the fuck I want you to do? Whoa. Really? Piece of shit. So apparently, we have to go to the ghetto method of doing this, uh, which should still work. A little bit longer. Okay, there it is, 504. Um, yeah, that might have been a little bit nicer if I'd actually... Um, Let's look for this in... We're going to BZ less this uh, Jupiter Galilean crap. Okay. So, 504. That's when it ends. And when it begins... Is... Let's go ahead and write this line down. That line's going to be important to us. So we'll slap it into whatever the hell we're our... We'll slap it into our notes. And then let's find where the last instance of 504 is. Is that far enough back? I think it is. 1859. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think I see what's wrong. Now clearly it couldn't have gone out of a partial eclipse and then out of a partial eclipse Did I just cut and paste the same line twice? I'm a freaking moron. Unless this really is the same line, line twice. Okay. Now I'm really unhappy. Oh, did I actually, by mistake... Alright, hang on. And the line we're looking for, which we were smart enough to note down, is this one. And that's the line we've already copied. So now I'm going to say question 504 to go back. Uh, and I'm going to do question 504 space to go back correctly. Okay, so this is... I sorted this freaking list. Okay. I even checked that it was sorted, so I guess I'm a bit confused. So now we're going to cheat by just grabbing for the positive value of that time that's going to be the same. We're not going to get that many more. Um, okay. Okay, so that value appears only once. Um, it's also possible that uh, the, you know, moving back and forward in using grep is not the um, 
is not the greatest. So let's go ahead and moving back and forth in less rather is not the greatest thing in the world. So let's do this, but let's grep for 504 at the beginning. So we're looking at fewer things than less. Still quite a bit of crap, but you know, less crap. Plus it means whatever we'll see before this number will be correct. Okay. Wow. That does look like it's a freaking long partial eclipse. So what the freak is going on here? And what's interesting is let's see if we have the central, okay, partial, partial minus. And what's interesting is we do not have, a whole bunch of these don't have like a CP plus CP minus. So Stellarium is not the best way to look at this, but it's the most fun. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, let's get rid of this and now we'll leave that up there. Um, any chance I get to run Stellarium seriously is just... And I do remember that this we have to use the special version of Stellarium that we just downloaded, which has the latest data. Um, I probably need to be in that directory to do it. Huh. Worked yesterday. I haven't changed this. All right, let's see what the hell you're unhappy about. Okay, so you did write a log file to log.txt. Operating system, blah, 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 blah. Config file is that. Couldn't load, that's fine. Empty translation file. Well, let's see if we can do safe mode, although I... Th yeah, let's see if that works. No, doesn't like it. So, um... Truly bizarre, no changes have been made to the graphic driver. In fact, no changes have been made to the machine at all, and yet now... Um... It refuses to run. What the fuck? Sure, shouldn't run it at all, actually. I'm gonna try running on my main machine real quick to see if it's decided to somehow break overnight. Stand by. Actually, I think the only place I have a copy of it is here, but that's okay because. It's also mounted on my other machine. Wow. It's decided to stop working there too. That is somewhat impressive. Uh, unless there's more than one version of Stellarium here. Nope, that's it. That is insanely bizarre. I have no idea what would cause that. Literally, I made no changes, you piece of crap. Um, the older version of Solarium is not going to be that helpful here. Well, I mean, it will be in the sense it could tell us where Callisto goes into a full moon and then a um, and then a new moon. Um, but this really bugs me. Now, if I'm going to try it from a different screen frame, and if this works... Oh, come on! Are you fucking kidding me? Why does it work from one screen and not the other? Is this like a print end of thing? Have I done something to my environment? Did I change the path or something? Um, Alright, stand by. Uh, env1.txt 
Oh. Yeah. This one, I don't have anything to find. I, I forgot to CD back to actually have the directory. So that, that is, that does make sense. I'm okay with that. All right. Let's go back to now that our red herring has been solved. Um, okay, we want to go to um, 1859, April 25th. And it doesn't really matter, we're just going to go to that time. And I'm beginning to think Stellarium should actually start with the stopped clock. And we're going to go to the lovely planet of in Jupiter Center. And we're going to look at the lovely moon Callisto. And we're going to get rid of the ground and the haze effects. I guess the haze effects. Okay. Now that looks like oh Al Debron's the thing below it. Okay. So Callisto nearly full quite ripe to enter a partial eclipse state at what we would say is 1228. So let's, let's go for it. Whoa! That's bouncy. Oh, hang on. Actually, let's do one more thing. Let's go ahead and move our, our telescope mode to fix so we don't get all that bouncing. We'll still see Callisto move through the stars, but it won't be due to the orientation that we're looking at. So anyway, whoa! So are you being partially eclipsed? Uh, you should be partially eclipsed at this point. Not good. I'll continue. Hey, <laughs> retrograde motion. Oh, here we go. Here's a partial eclipse. Oh, shit. Why do I always do that? Um, so the partial eclipse is occurring here at 0427-ish, I guess? Uh, we're not really happy with this, but let's, let's continue. Okay, good, good, good. Partial. Um, okay. This is okay. Still partial. You're going to be partialing for a while now, aren't you? Oh no, that's not a partial eclipse, that's just the illumination decreasing as you go from phase to phase. Uh, so this is not a partial eclipse. We've, gotten, we've done something wrong. And the way to not fix it... So according to us, you're heading for another, when, when you get full again, you're heading for another eclipse on the 12th. Let's bring that a little bit closer. Boy, this is just like unnecessary zoom kind of stuff. Okay. 97.4 eliminated. And eclipse! What? Oh! That was cool. So not quite a total eclipse. Partial eclipse, control S is to save. Um, okay, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. And this is on, we say it'll end at 7.53. So let's keep going, let's see, if, let's watch it end. So I think we got, I think we, we missed a beginning of, okay. So, 812, but I mean, whatever. Okay, so we're not really doing great with these these estimates of these eclipses, but then again, we're using different numbers than than NASA, uh, than Stellarium does. Okay, now let's go back to the other full, the last time you were full. We'll slow it down once we get there. Back, back to new. Back to... Getting full, getting full, getting full, getting full. Okay, well, we did see that eclipse there. So now,
we just wait forever and nothing happens. So the closer you get to 100% illuminated, the more, I mean, that's when the eclipse occurs. 100% illuminated means it's exactly opposite the sun. And so Jupiter's shadow can fall on it. Um, let me do a little bit faster. Okay. That looks really good in, in fast motion. Okay, so we do have an eclipse here, and it, and the problem is we missed the end of that eclipse. Okay, that seems to be the issue. So now, the way to not fix it is, well, first of all, we can just run the occultations program on that one year uh, for blah, 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 blah. And the year was 1859. And actually, that, that's okay, because we did expect to get many of them. Uh, let's see what happens. Wait. So what was the problem originally? It was... 425 to 512. Okay. You went into an eclipse. Wait a minute. That wasn't there originally. Mm, that's not good. The total time frame should not affect which eclipses are showing up and which are not. That is very uncool. So, 12, 28, 38. Okay. Yeah, we have that. So the thing we're missing, the missing link, or the missing line in this case, from our output is this sucker that actually shows that that eclipse ended. Uh, we do not have a line like that. The eclipse lasted an hour and it ended. So, let me make sure we don't have a line like that, but I, I, we don't have a line like that. Uh, this is the, uh, the, uh, the extreme ugly, I don't even think anything happening at that second. And... Oh, very bad booyah. So now, now we are in trouble. So let's confirm this appears. It shouldn't take that long. So here is the problem that is going to just F with everything. Um, if we look at it one year at a time, which might not be a bad idea, by the way, um, this works. Now, what happens if we go to a 10-year time frame that includes that time? I think it should still work. If it fails, we'll have actually, actually a good thing in our case. If it takes forever to run, also a good thing for our case because we need to kill some time on the stream. I don't know why, but uh, but I do. Damn, this is taking a really long time, even given that we're on a VM and blah 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 blah. Um, okay, so we still get it. This is very mysterious. Okay, as it turns out, I did actually save the originals before I merged them together. Oh, I don't, sorry, here it's just, here it's, here it's just what it is. Um, so here we are. So here we have Eclipses 504. And that should either have or not have this value in it. If it does, I've screwed something up, obviously. 
and it doesn't. So it won't be in spice eclipses, but we might be able to get a close to time there. Um, let's see if it says anything about this. No. Anything in these 10 days at all? No. Anything in this freaking month? I'm getting suspicious now. Wow. Okay. Alright, so our problem here appears to be that depending on the settings for start time and end time, uh, an eclipse can be missed. Now there's a way around this. Um, oh crap, actually. I mean, we could run the whole thing again on 1800 to, uh, you know, to 1850 to 2100, uh, and then see it be missed again, but that would take for freaking ever. So we need it to fail in a, in a better way. So 1850 is the earliest we can go. And this is going to take too long. I need to find out where it's failing. Uh, so we can figure out how, well, how big of a time interval it takes to fail. Then we could change the tolerance level that we had set to 3600, and I'd said, maybe 3600 is not the best, uh, best time there. Um, but this is going to take a while, so I'm unhappy. Um, and this also means we'll have to rerun the programs, so I'm unhappy about that. Now the temptation here is to ask the question, uh, do I have any chatters? No, I know. Uh, they ask the question, what if I ran them one year at a time instead of trying to run them for 250 years all at once and then merge the results? Um, my only concern there is because we would start off in or outside of an eclipse, we would have some issues. Um, so this is going to take forever. So this is actually not good. Okay. Of course, the problem is if we missed that eclipse, what other eclipses did we miss? Not, not good. Um, so apparently we've got to run this program with a, a, a better tolerance, although it takes forever to run with the given tolerance, with the 3600 second tolerance. But apparently we can have an eclipse of Callisto that, and actually that makes sense, you can have an eclipse that starts and ends within an hour. So that's, that's problematic. All right, let's go ahead and fix it. We're not going to run it, but we're going to fix it. Yep, see where I say 3600 too big? That is correct. Um, the more I drop it, the slower the damn thing's going to get. Um, I think I can safely say if it doesn't catch eclipses under a minute, I'm okay with saying this doesn't catch eclipses under a minute. And I think I'll just put that into my um, file here. Uh, so basically this is going to F my machine over. Um, and honestly, I think I'm actually running... Um, yeah. I was running um, occultations for uh, uh, Metis, the 16th moon of Jupiter, but that's not going to happen. That's not going to be good. We might have to CPU limit this. And then uh, BC, occultation, BC Spice occultations. And we need to do the same. I, I bet you have the, the same comment here. Yep, 3600? No, not good. Oh, RR. Somebody changed something. Okay. okay, then we can remake these and rerun these. Uh, clearly, we can't do that here on stream. That would take for freaking ever. Okay, now let's see. Um, so we're, we're sort of at a pause with this Jupiter occultations question. We're at a bigger pause with the uh, Metis occultation question because our estimates are much worse there. So what the hell are we doing next? I don't know. Uh, when you create your own. 
Yeah, you, we can uh, create our own spice object that is a point on the surface of something, um, but that's not particularly uh, useful because we've now kind of um, we've now d you know we figured out that if you make the Earth one eighty fifth bigger, uh, as they suggest, the we, we get the lunar eclipse data that we want. Um, okay, so now I'm going to do something that's so useless. Um, that I am, uh, that it can't help you at all unless you happen to follow the same thing I do, um, which is good. So here's what we're trying to do now. Um, unfortunately, this is a private file that I have here, uh, so you can't see it, I know. Um, and some of the sections are tagged like this. Bunch of lines here, and then foo. And some of these sections that are tagged like this are uh, checklists. And, uh, for example, I have a checklist for when I'm streaming of things I need to do, uh, such as not prepare at all. Um, sometimes I want to actually go through these um, one at a time, but not necessarily in order. So obviously I can't edit the, the template of the checklist. Uh, what I'd like to do, though, is create, you know, the, uh, the checklist between the two, uh, between the two uh, tags and bring it up as a separate new temporary checklist file that I can then edit for myself. So let's assume that uh, section was, that was correct. I call these things uh, that are between these and this a section, so let's see if I've got done anything uh, that already deals with this. I don't think I have, I, but I also don't have a brain, so it's pretty sad. In fact, I might have at one point uh, actually gotten really excited about this and written something up um, deeper than I'm going to pipe this to less just so we can do a control L and not have to see all this garbage, which is getting worse, by the way. I need to probably do something about that. Okay, it does not appear that um, the, the only two things here are wor WordPress entries. I think uh, there's a lot of programs I have that are called check something, but they're not about checklists. They're about confirming something is happening. Um, oh. That's interesting. Um, I don't think this does what I want, but you know, let's take a look at it. Ooh, uses Zenity to create a checkbox list from a file. Useful for I am very OCD. Um, uh, let's see. Well, well, well. So this is a little bit different of wh from what I'm doing. I'm actually pretty impressed here. Um, Oh my god, I actually put it as a command line. I am... that is freaking ugly. Uh, apparently I found this useful at one point. Uh, but it's not exactly what I'm looking for now, although this is actually sort of interesting. Um, because I like to erase more than I like to check things off of a list. So this is interesting. Um, we're going to call this section checklist.pl. Let me see if there's anything. El oh, your mama. Uh, let's see if there's anything else here that that uh, gave me that. I don't think there is. Name and checker. Paycheck is the name of a movie. Extract attachments. Pop pop. Oh, that's uh, 419. That's for uh, scammers. Okay, and dupe checker, I happen to know, just checks to see if two files are identical. I mean, it does more than that, but but it's not about checklists. Okay, so we will start off with the bin Perl hashtag. We will require my... Yeah, and we will ex describe this. Extract a section of a file uh, delimited 
Uh, and I'm tempted to allow like extra tags in the beginning, um, like you know the XML, the way XML does it, um, or even things like you know tag name equals blah 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 blah. But for right now, let's just do this. Um, and copy that section. Copy that section to a. to a time-stamped new file and bring up that time-stamped file in Emacs. So we're not necessarily going to make the file temporary. We might decide we want to keep it around uh, if it's a checklist. Okay. Now, so again, I guess the section to extract. And so, um, so the question is, yeah, let's go ahead and actually read the file in so people can use different, I only have one file that I do this with but I will allow people to have multiple files to do this with. And the reason I'm doing this is because I use this very nice um, command file command, uh, pr command that I've written, uh, subroutine, that returns both the data and the name of the file when you load in. So we should be, okay, so we can do one additional test here. And I use glob ops when someone uses something in a global option. Um, required option. <laughs> it's funny. Okay. So if they have provided a section and we get the data, this should be like a two-liner then. Data equals substitute. Um, I guess we're going to actually try to match here. Match glob ops section. Um... any number of characters that are not a closing tag um, hmm. so what do we want here um, not a closing tag any number then we do, we do need a closing tag um, and we might as well capture the name of the section. I mean, we, we give it as an option, so it's not really... Actually, we don't. We, we don't need to do that. Okay. And then the section itself will be anything in that area, followed by a backslash, which I think I need to escape. Glob ops. God damn, I don't even think this is going to work. Section. And I think closing tags, we can, we can say, don't have any extra crap in them. So we can do this. Um, so if this works, it will give us a, um, it will give us uh, sections of a, uh, oh, another thing it could try to do is list the existing sections in the file so you can know which one, you know, so you know what's in there. All right, so let me go ahead and try this on my other machine, which where it will not work. Um, wow. Um, okay. By the way, right now I don't check to see that the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the XML tag is at the very left, uh, of, uh, of what I'm doing, but, but, you know, that's, uh, section checklist, um, Whoa! Okay, this doesn't even compile. It's unhappy with line 15. Okay, 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 I know what's wrong. Okay. So I'll try to run it here before we run it anywhere else. Uh, glob section. Um, any number of non-star characters followed by a closing diggy. Uh, 
Okay, what am I doing here? We're really gonna have to build this expression up. Um, and I guess we could create a test file. That's not that's not a big deal. Um, in fact, I probably should, huh? All right. So let's do this real quickly, and then we'll say BC section checklist <laughs> test dot text foo. This is some information about foo. Bar. This is some information about alcohol serving establishments. I'm so funny. Bar. Now, of course, the real file that I'm using has a lot more of these, but this is this should be fine. So now we should be able to test with. Uh, I guess we're in the main directory here, aren't we? Okay. Profix to make sure we all chamada everything. Rehash to make sure it shows up in our. Uh, executable library, checklist, uh, debug, check, list, no, oh no, this, sorry, BC section, checklist, nope, BC section, checklist, PL, um, I want the section foo out of BC section, checklist dot test, syntax error at line 15. So that's how far we, we got there. All right, so let's see if we can actually get as far as this. Um, or if I'm still using too many special characters. Okay, that didn't, didn't, that didn't bug it. Oh, actually, I need a minus minus to bug. And right now I'm not capturing anything, so that's not a huge deal. Um, Then any number of characters that are not the right thing, the closing brace. Yeah. Um, and I think the problem might be I'm not allowed to do this sort of uh, braces in here because it has a different meaning to um, to the regex. So we actually want to do something like this. We want to give it a separate variable that isn't inside of a hash. I think. I don't know. If you're coming to me for Pearl advice. <laughs> Alright, so this might actually work. It did. Okay, so that was the problem. So now we're going to go ho full hog. Full boss hog here. And um, change this to section. And watch magic not happen. Yeah. Okay, but we're getting closer. And actually, we do need to put here, um, case doesn't need to be ignored. We have no letter, but single line, meaning the, the uh, match can go across multiple lines. We treat the file as a single line. Ooh, shiny. Can I get information about bar? Shiny, can I get some information about berry? No, because there is no section berry. Um... So we should be able to add this. No section section. We can't find it. We can't find it. So now let's see if that broke, that gave an error when it does here. No section buried. Man, very sad. I need to add a section buried. Awesome. So we don't necessarily want to just print them out. This is just what we're doing for right now. Let me go ahead and getify this even though it's very simple. Uh, you know, I'm very paranoid. That's why I'm creating the program in the first place. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and recompile the uh, the functions that we uh, the 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 code that we changed, because it really is the one hour was really too long. And I think, um, and I don't want to forget that I've changed this code. Um. Okay. I'm also going to kill the job that is doing um, that is doing this for Mitas. Um, because we do not. Ooh. Oh, it won't die. Hang on. Kill minus nine, baby. Yeah, and it's gone now. 
Okay, so it's, it's going to take us some time to um, rerun, uh, probably 60 times as long now, uh, rerun um, other occult. So I'm making a note to myself, you can't see it, not an issue. Alright, so what we want to do with this is once we have it, we want to write it to a file that has sort of a, um, see I don't want to make it a real temporary file because I, I don't necessarily want to reap it. So what can we do? Uh, I mean, we could put it in var cache, but that's again kind of funky. All right, let me see if there are any directories here that uh, already would be a good place to put them. And if not, we will, we will. Um, all right, we're going to do the standard thing we do, which is we're going to put it into user local Etsy checklist, or I guess section checklist. Which, of course, if it doesn't exist, it's not going to help you a great deal. Okay. Now, stand by. All right, so we will do this first. Checklist, it should be a directory. I and I'm going to be get really lazy and put my dir equal this. So I don't have to print it twice. Unless minus die dir, die dir does not exist. Now it's possible that it exists, but you can't write to it, and I don't, I don't account for that situation. Okay. So now we have, um, I don't know if we want it a list. We'll call it a list. It's not really a list. We'll call it a list. Okay, now we need to write it somewhere. Um... And there's a really good way to get a really timestamp that unless your machine is doing crazy things. Hang on, do we have another do we have another voice? Hello! Hello, fierce crocodile. I am indeed still streaming, as you can see. I have I have been streaming for quite a, I think like two hours now, I think, something like that. Uh, no, not quite two hours, close to two hours. Um, and I found a bug in the other program, so we have to go back and look at it. Uh, you went jogging in your... Well, I can stream longer than you can jog. That should not be impressive to anyone. Um, well, if you have any questions, comments, um, we're now trying to create a program that extracts a section out of a file that's supposed supposedly a checklist and then creates a separate file for it uh, so that you can, you know, do whatever it is you want to do with your checklist. Uh, you can delete it, edit it, whatever the hell it is you want. Um, so right now I think I have a program, I, I always say I think I have a function that does this and it turns out I don't. Uh, like a timestamp. Um, a, a basically, a th something that gives you a really nice um, a file name that probably doesn't exist otherwise. Seriously? Is it temp name? Nope. Temporary file. Nope. Temporary file. And I'm doing this wrong. Wow. I really need to get on top of my game there. This BC Lib sucks. Yeah, this is the latest version. Alright. Um, okay, so usually what you can do here is you can do like back date plus that's how we do it. Um, I'm hesitant to do that here because I don't want to rely on a Unix program. So let's just say um, okay. So we're going to take we want the section name in there that because that's actually kind of useful. Um, we could append. Yeah, I think this is going to be good enough. Uh, start date, which is a function I know I've written, equals start date of local time. I don't know if that's how it works, though. Um, my f name equals section dash start date dot text. Okay. And then, let's just go ahead and make sure that's working. If it is, we are in pretty good shape. We're like 90% of the way there. All right, let's see what this does. 
Oh yeah, I need to actually create user. <laughs> well, that's good. Thanks for telling me that. I forgot to do that. Okay. So we have that. And now the pr problem is I'm not going to be able to write to it, but that's that's another problem. Foo, that is not the correct. Is it? Is it just time? I think that's it. It's the Unix time. Yeah, there we are. That's oh, that is local time for this machine. Um, so now, we can do a write file, and I always forget which parameter I decided would be first for write file, because I'm a moron. Okay, so it's the, it's the data that you want to write first, so that's going to be a um, list. And the file you want to write in is dir slash fname. So we're not quite done yet. The final thing we want to do is emacs. And put it in the background. So now, first let's look for section Barry to see what inf information we have about Barry. We have no information about Barry. That's fine. Now we want information about the section foo. Okay, and there is a problem here. Uh, permission denied. Uh, so I need to do sudo chone minus. All right. Okay, and there it is. Beautiful. I'm now going to push it to Git and then check it on my own machine where it's actually useful to someone. Mm, I.e. me. And if you're wondering if you could use this on regular XML documents, you, you can, but it's only going to find the innermost version of that tag. Uh, so real XML, you should be using a more something that allows for more nesting. Um, so here we go. Rehash. Prof uh, we already don't need to do that. Okay. So BC section checklist. I want the section named this, which I can't tell you about. And I just realized I don't have the correct files on my machine, so it's going to complain. Okay, now it does. Whoa, it worked. I mean, of course it worked. Why wouldn't it work? Booyah. Uh, so and we'll stay there forever or until I delete it. Okay, so we've written a little nice little program that is of no help to anyone but me. That's, that's nice. Um... I guess we can mark that off of our uh, list. Okay. And I did just do a git push, so I think I'm okay with um, I'm okay with doing that. Now, another thing I need to do for myself, not for you, is I often order food from lots of places, and I need to make sure that I got the order numbers. I don't. I enter them into a database, and I need to make sure that they are uh, they are not the same. And to do that, we we do we do some other stuff. Um, things we won't be doing is now usually when, when we're talking about an eclipse we're talking about the sun being light source however if um, for example the moon is fairly bright in our night sky so if a satellite eclipses or transits the moon we could want to know about that so that is another way we could sort of tweak our occultations program um, okay all right so we did that um, uh, I did wind to NASA, didn't wind to Stellarium, though. Um, yada, 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 yada. And we did write Pro Code to do this, and we, we need to rerun it, of course. Um, lots of crap here. So now let's look over here at the uh, not list of future... Damn. I probably need to clean this file up a little bit, huh? Oh, hang on. Set up mini git on. I don't need to do that anymore. Um, okay. Okay. So I added two more things to this ones I didn't. Um, no, I didn't apparently. Okay. Cool. Okay. Local rising. Okay. Cool. 
So here, these are some easier questions that uh, we could we could we could look at. Uh, helical rising means the star rises at the same time as the sun does. Uh, to be fair, you could not see the star if it were doing that. So usually, ancient peoples used pre-helical rising, meaning that the star rose just before uh, the sky got um, the sky got too light for them to see stars. Uh, and maybe I'll put that in there just to make myself look special. And I don't know what criteria they used, whether it was astronomical, nautical, or civil twilight. The stars are bright. I think that civil twilight is probably what they went with. Uh, that sounds about reasonable. Um, I could stream for hours, but... Um, and maybe I will. Okay, so and we earlier we did try to um, find constellation boundaries using... Uh, Brandon Rhodes' uh, helpful file, which is not as helpful, Brandon, as it could be. So, unhappy about that. Um, although, creating our own would not be a bad idea either, to be honest. Um, another thing I need to do that uh, doesn't really concern you either, is I need to make sure that uh, the videos I record, these videos that you're watching now, the videos I download to my machine for safekeeping, so quote unquote, and the videos I upload to YouTube are identical. They're, they're the same set of videos that I haven't forgotten to download one or push one to YouTube or anything like that. And I've got to do that about once every two weeks or more frequently because Twitch will delete videos after that time. Um, and that is, uh, I was just going to make a process for that and I think, uh, you know, you could use some basic Unix tools to figure that out. I am probably... Um, Probably not going to do that right now, but we need to do that at some. I need to do that at some point. Uh, at some point, I want to do like a, a brag stream. This is now I'm just talking about stuff I want to do. A brag stream that shows off uh, some of the stuff I've already done that people might be interested in contributing to. Uh, that'll be a very short stream, uh, and that'll be a uh, probably a scripted uh, stream. Okay. And I think that's it for today. I think well, not for right now, and maybe today. So thank you for watching. I may or may not come back later today.